Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY, and today I'm going to show you how I installed a radiant floor heating system into my home. For those of you who don't know, radiant floor heat utilizes a PEX tubing system woven throughout your floors um, that you flow hot water through to transmit the heat into your rooms. Now there's two main types, the first being a new home build. What you do is you run your PEX tubing through in between your subfloor and your flooring. This is the most efficient way because you're only going through that layer of laminate, hardwood, or carpet to get into your rooms. So this is your best choice if it's available to you. For people like me, they already have their, uh, their home and they have either like a baseboard hot water heat or forced air. What you want to do is a retrofit. That's where you run your PEX tubing underneath your subfloor in between your joist bays. Now this is less efficient because you gotta go through that additional layer of subflooring. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna use aluminum heat transfer plates that fit around our PEX tubing. This helps transmit the heat out and up into our rooms. So I'm gonna show you a picture real quick of why I really like this system. Okay, in this picture you can see two separate rooms. Both the rooms are heated to 72 degrees. And the right, the guy is heating his room with forced hot air. As everybody knows, forced hot air rises. So he is having to heat his room from the top to the bottom. Now the guy on the left is heating his room with radiant floor heat. He's heating his room from the bottom up. Now you may say there's no difference because both rooms are 72 degrees. But look at the temperature gradient. The guy on the left has all that warmth radiating from the floor so it's based close to where your living space is, where you're going to be sitting, moving around. The guy on the right, on the other hand, has to heat from the ceiling down. All that heat is up at the top. So once it hits that thermostat, it's going to cut it off, but the bottom, where the cool air is at and your floor is, is going to feel colder. So you never get that warm feeling that you do from radiant floor heat. It's just a better way to heat your home. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead with the install. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find a location to place your PEX manifold. Your PEX manifold is literally the heart of this project, and it is where your PEX tubing will branch out from into the different zones of your house. Um, when you're thinking about where to put this, keep in mind you want to keep the distance from your heating source and your PEX manifold pretty close. Um, if you have your um, heating source at one end of the house and your manifold at the other, your water, heated water has to travel all the way to the manifold and then out to the zones um, to heat your rooms. It's not very efficient. You want to keep them as close as you can together and towards the center of your house, um, especially your manifold, because if you, again, if you have a, a room that's at one end that's really cold, and uh, your manifold's at one end, the other end of the house, by the time the hot water gets there, it's cooled down already. So keep your manifold close to the center of your home and also try and keep it as close as you can to your heat source. Luckily for me, um, my furnace is really close to the center of my basement um, underneath here, um, so that's a good deal for me. Um, I have my chimney here, so I don't really want to put my manifold on that. But I do have this um, cinder block uh, pillar here um, to support my main beam for my basement. So this is where I'm going to be putting my PEX manifold. Now, what the best thing to do is, is to put your manifold on some type of board. Um, it allows you to keep all of your tubing running into and out of very neat because you can either staple it or we have some um, talon. Um, clips that can uh, uh, hold your PEX tubing down make it look a lot nicer. Okay, so we got the manifold attached to the board, now we just got to mount it in place. What I'm going to use is for tap cons. Take your hammer drill and mason bit and drill a hole. Okay. 
Okay, then take your Tapcon on a washer and just screw it into the wall. Okay, the next thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to drill holes in our floor joists. I've already done this. Um, when you do that, use a uh, three-quarter inch bit for half-inch hose. It gives you a little bit more play um, to make the pecs going through a little easier. Another thing is, if you have um, floors that you've nailed down, like your subfloor nailed to your joist, make sure your hole is at least two inches down from your subfloor. Reason being is, is I ruined my wood bit because I hit a nail. Um, so make sure it comes down a little bit. Um, the reason you do going through the joist instead of under it is the pex doesn't bend as well. Very good. So basically, you'll just come through here and then start your other loop, go through your next joist, and then just keep going like that. All right, now that you have all your holes drilled through your joists, it's time to run your first zone of PEX tubing. So what you're going to do is work from your manifold, run your loops through your joists, and just keep working down, and then come back with that same loop into your return set. Okay, so here we just ran a couple loops through the joist so you can see what it looks like. Um, we did a crossover, um, so basically uh, you come through a joist, you make your loop, and you cross back over to go back through. This uh, relieves you from doing a 90 degree bend and heading down, coming back, another 90 degree bend and going through. So I definitely recommend a crossover system. Um, so we cross over, we get to our last joist. We make our loop and then we'll come back through. So you're going to need to drill two holes, one for your loops going down and one for your return um, coming back. So your return will come all the way back and it will come through and then hook into your return and basically go back out then. got all of our PEX tubing roughed in, a little bit of a hassle, tubes everywhere, but we got it squared away. So the next thing we need to do is put our um, transfer heat plates in, aluminum plates. So um, it's really important at where you start and end this process. Um, what you need to do is work from your manifold and find a return line and go to your farthest loop. So this is our return line right here. And this is my farthest loop away from uh, my manifold. So what you want to do is on this line, return line, on your farthest loop, start with your aluminum plates there. Run them all the way down, run them back, and then you're going to jump over, and then on your next joist um, bay, run them down, run your aluminum plates down, and then come back and just repeat the process. The reason being, if you were to start from your um, supply side and start putting in um, your heat transfer plates from supply and work towards your return like the water is going to flow once you get to your very last loop oops I didn't put enough PEX tubing in and say you're like five feet short well we didn't run the PEX tubing that way so you have an end on that end so if you keep pulling pulling you're going to be short and you won't make it to your manifold what you need to do is work in reverse. Work from return back towards the supply because that's where our spool is of PEX tubing. So if we're short, all we need to do is just feed a little bit more in and get your, um, to, uh, your PEX tubing to your manifold nice and neat. Um, so that's really important, so make sure you do that and think ahead and plan it out. Okay, so remember what you're going to want to do is work from return and, and work towards your supply. So here's our return line. I'm going to work down this way. Um, you're going to take your aluminum heat transfer plates and just kind of snap the front in place like so and then push it back so it looks kind of neat. Um, it's about in line with our other ones 
and just kind of put it wherever you want. Oh. Like so. Okay, once you have the first one in, what I do is usually um, put the rest of the tubing in, snap it down in the channel, which can be a real pain sometimes. Aim uh, where you want it to be going down. There you go. And then just, I usually just do two, 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 and then two at the end. So two in the beginning to hold it so it doesn't move your pipe around, and then two in the end. Works out really well. And then just keep working on the way down. heat transfer plates in place, we can start working on hooking everything up. Um, what we're going to be doing now is we ran the uh, return and supply sides down here. I'm running my return side down the back. Um, as you can see on the back, I have just two talon clips to hold it in place, bend it underneath the back, and we're going to feed it up underneath here into our first return port. So this is our return line, so this is where it's going to go. Um, it's a little cold down here right now, so the best thing to do if you're going to make some sharp bends is to heat it up. So, I brought down my wife's hair dryer. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. Um, if you don't do that and it's cold out, you run a potential of kinking your line and you definitely don't want to do that, especially this uh, late in the game. So we're going to bend it, I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then what we're going to do next is... Uh, I'll do a closer up shot so you can see in here and uh, see what is going, going on with better. Okay, what you're going to want to do first is take your nut, place it over the end of your pecs, take your compression ring and fit that over next, and then take your nipple and seat it down in. This O-ring will seat in a, in a seat in here. And uh, this will, this compression ring will clip closed around the nipple, and that's all done by screwing this nut in. So we can just take that back. And make sure that it seats. Make sure it's not down or your pex is out. Make sure everything is up there good, it's even. And then just tighten that up. Make sure you push up while you're tightening down on it so everything stays seated. And there you go, you got your first connection in. Okay, I ran into a little bit of a problem. Um, I want to run my PEX um, manifold supply and returns up through the ceiling. Um, I was going through the uh, aisle at uh, Home Depot and I saw these and I thought they were made for PEX. Well, they are not. I believe they're made for a polyethylene tubing. PEX will not fit on this no matter what you try. So we're going to have to take these off and go a different route. Um, I want a, uh, this is a one inch male thread to a, uh, I want a PEX elbow on here. The only one I found was on, I believe it was Sears.com and it was like $33 for a brass one. That's outrageous. Um, so I didn't go that route. 
and I couldn't find plastic ones that were cheap. So what I did is I'm going to go from a one inch male thread to a straight pex and then one inch pex um, elbow. Um, it's going to give you a little bit more connections so it, it it's, has a likelihood of leaking but the only other option I could find was a one inch male thread to three quarter inch um, pex. And I didn't want to go that route because we're running a five port manifold and I want the flow there. I don't want to restrict anything. So um, those are your two options. This option that I'm going to use has a more likelihood of leaking because of the, um, the more connections you have. But with the other one, you're going to limit flow. So you need to know what will work for you. And uh, what, especially if you have something greater than five um, ports, I can't recommend uh, uh, stepping it down. So we're going to use um, all one inch and uh, we're going to throw those on then. Okay, we finally got all that stuff together. Um, we used the brass fittings that I was talking about. We have everything plumbed up and uh, we have it hooked up to our furnace back here so everything is ready to go. The next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and pressurize your system filled with water. Um, you're looking for leaks. You're going to start from the beginning and go all the way to the end. Look over all your pipe, make sure there's no nicks in it, no leaking anywhere. I did have one leak myself. It was right here at my ball valve. I think I didn't dope up the threads good enough, so it did have a little bit of a drip. Rip that apart, put it back together, it's good as new. Um, there is one thing that I noticed about this system. We, I only ran one line underneath our bathroom because time constraints and I wanted to get this video together. Um, that is the coldest room in our house. So it did take quite some time to warm that room up. It's not where it's like a forced air system where it's blowing warm air right into your room and it, you feel warm right away. That's not the way this system works. You have to heat up that big floor mass, um, the subfloor, the tiling. You got to get that up to temperature. Once you do that, everything's good then. Um, I noticed that the furnace scaled back a lot. It wasn't working so hard. But just getting up to that temperature, that does take some time. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. It was a blast putting all this together. And uh, if you guys have any questions with any of the components I used or the tools, just shoot me an email. Because I didn't get to go in depth as much as I like to. But hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you again next time.